Thank you very much, I need an introduction. My name is Osama. I work for an organization called Made in Europe. Made as a Muslim agency for development enterprise. Today, really what I want to talk to you about is knowledge and how it relates to power and how it relates on the ground in our field, which is development. Really, I want to say or break my speech into three sections. The first, and these three things I say are relevant and important to us as an NGO, but to all NGOs, is the first is knowing the problem. What are the problems? Now, that doesn't really need much elaboration. The second is knowing the solutions. We don't know the solutions, but obviously the impact we have is going to be very limited. But I would argue that the most important thing that we should know as an NGO, or as NGOs, is the knowledge of how to motivate people. The theme of today seems to be, uh, and I'm in agreement with, with some of the previous speakers, that knowledge alone does not necessarily equate to power. And I would argue that the bridge between knowledge and power is people, is motivation. In terms of the first issue, knowing the problem. As NGOs, we, we know the problem, or we like to think we know the problem. There are over 1.2 billion people living on less than $2 a day. We have 800 million people who go to bed every night malnourished. We have 10 million children every year dying of diseases that are easily preventable. We have the issue of aid over the last 15, 20 years. Over $500 billion has been given to Africa in aid, but yet large parts of Africa remain underdeveloped. We have the issue of multinational corporations and the really unprecedented power they yield on a global scale. And of course, we have the issue of the IMF and the World Bank, which too often form part of the problem and not part of the solution. We have the issue of climate change. We know that climate change is not something of the future, something to be worried about. It's happening now, something we need to be concerned about today. We see the impact of climate change, the impact it's having every day on producers in Asia, in Africa, and much of the global south. So we know there are all these problems. Now, we think we also know the solution as an NGO or as NGOs. We know that if we're to tackle some of these problems, we have to really concentrate on three things. We need to concentrate on providing economic opportunities. We have to concentrate on providing access to healthcare. We have to concentrate on education as a root out of many of these problems. We know that solutions have to be sustainable. We've learned that through many, many mistakes that have been made. We know that the solutions lie in, for example, tackling that much of the corruption that exists in many underdeveloped countries. We know that also, for example, if we're talking about uh, the food crisis and the food shortage that we're currently witnessing, that we have to look at solutions. Things like small-scale farming. We need to look at irrigation. We need to look at technologies and new methods, perhaps, of irrigating land and helping producers produce more food. So there are a number of solutions to a number of these problems. We know too, for example, that if we're talking about poverty in general, then, for example, the key role that the education of young girls plays as a solution. We know the tendencies show that if young girls are educated, they're more likely, for example, to marry later. They're more likely to make more money. They're more likely to have less children. We know the statistics show that educated girls are more likely to immunize their children. They're more likely, for example, to educate the next generation. This creates a ripple effect. We've seen this, we know this. It affects families, it affects communities, and it affects entire countries. So we know the problems, we know many of the solutions, but something's missing. People are still poor. Over three billion people suffer from some type of poverty. So there are still issues. And why is that? And I will argue that's because we don't have enough people. Our movement is not big enough. Not enough of us are taking individual responsibility to 
tackle these problems. And that takes me to my third point, motivation. We need to know as NGOs, as charities, how to motivate people to get involved, to join the campaign, to tackle some of these problems. And that really, I would argue, is the key to whether or not we succeed. As a charity, as a faith inspired charity, really one of the key cornerstones of, of, of our beliefs is that things will not change until we change things ourselves. The importance of action. Action, and I think it's written well by this Quranic area, a chapter, a verse of the Quran, which says, Allah, God, does not change the condition of the people unless they change what is in themselves. We've seen today already from other speakers that knowledge alone does not mean about change. So what's missing? And we try, as an organization, to go out to certain communities that since traditionally haven't been involved in tackling some of the problems that we've seen. We believe as an organization, and we get this again from the faith of Islam, that we are really part of the problem as much as we are part of the solution. Things are not the way they are because they were meant to be this way. We know from statistics, we know from history, that really we only have ourselves to blame if we look at climate change, if we look at international trade and how it's regulated, if we look at so many other areas that fall under the broad umbrella of global development that we are to blame. Corruption has appeared Corruption has appeared on the land and in the sea because of what the hands of humans have wrought. Again, the emphasis on action. <coughs> we live in a country where perhaps it's not religion, it, it, it's not really the cool thing to talk about. And maybe less so and so as. But we say as an organization that we're proud to say that our faith or the faith of Islam, the religion of Islam, actually inspires us to do good. And that religion in general, and of course we believe Islam specifically too, has a role to play, a really powerful role to play in being a positive catalyst for change. Too often religion is in the headlines for the wrong reason. And often religion is associated with things that don't do justice to some of these really fundamental, fundamental, uh, fundamental teachings This is a tradition of the Prophet Muhammad. If one of you sees something wrong, let him change it with his hand. If he cannot, then with his tongue. If he cannot, then with his heart. And this is the weakest of faith. Again, really strong on action here. What we're trying to do as an organization is to really change the perception that people have in the Muslim community specifically about what charity is. What does it mean to give charity? For too long, we think, Charity has really been understood or defined as giving money, putting that five pound in the bucket, putting the one pound, paying your arms, which is necessary, uh, a tenant of faith in Islam. But we're saying, no, hold on. That's important. Giving charity, giving money is important. But it's not enough. But what we're trying to do really is to redefine what it means to give charity. We're trying to define charity as involving action, is actually being involved, taking personal initiative and taking personal responsibility in trying to be part of the solution. Now, there are over 2.5 million Muslims in the UK. There are over 50 million Muslims in Europe. We try to use the faith of Islam as their inspiration, as their motivation to go out there and join the global movement. Different people are motivated by different things. Some people want to get involved in the movement because of the opportunities in terms of technology. We need new technology to tackle some of these problems, to tackle issues we witness with climate change. So different people are obviously motivated by different things. But we believe that we can use Islam to motivate areas and communities that traditionally have not been that involved in the struggle to find solutions. 
in a uh, study undertaken by Ipsos Mori last year, it showed that Muslims were, mo were uh, it showed that Muslims were most likely to cite their religion as uh, a really important dimension of their life. The study also showed that Muslims were most likely to ascribe doing good to their religion. Now, I'm not saying, if I misunderstood, that Muslims are more likely to do good. No. I know too many Muslims who really are, I think, uh, allergic to doing good. What the study shows is that if Muslims do good, they're more, they're more likely or they're most likely to ascribe that good to their religion. So we understand this in Middle Europe. And we thought, well, how can we get this community, these Muslims in the UK, who are really not that engaged on issues of development, and get them involved, get them at the table. We want to see a mass movement of young Muslims at the table. This morning we saw from one of our speakers, we were talking about international bodies and international organizations. And we wanted to see and give a voice to people who traditionally are not sat at these tables. So how do we access them? And how do we reach them? We work with many, many mainstream, large, multi, multi, multi million pound organizations who come to us and say, we need to diversify our campaign. We need to diversify our volunteer. What are we doing wrong? And sometimes it's very simple. It's the language we use. Sometimes we just need to understand what motivates people and get them involved. Just if I go back, like I said earlier, we do believe that Islam encourages people to take action. And here on the, on, the, on the screen is just some examples that we use when we're talking to Muslim communities, when we're trying to engage with young Muslims to encourage them to get involved. The world is beautiful and burdened. Verily God, he exalted, has made you the steward's image. And he sees how you equip yourself. So we talk to them in the language of Islam to get them involved, to get them to... We live in a world of distractions at the moment. It's very hard if you're young. There are the iPads, there are the iPods, through the computers, the TVs, all the entertainment and luxuries that we enjoy. But we're trying to reach them and to say to them, guys, come on, there's something here that really is worthy of your attention. And we use their religion, their faith, to get to them. Now, this is a famous quote from Gandhi. You must be the change you want to see in the world. Why do I quote this? Because really, faith is not enough. It's not enough to say that I believe. I believe in Islam, or I believe in doing good, or I believe in this or that. Because belief alone is really not going to bring the kind of change we need, that we urgently want to see. We have to be the change we want to see. And of course, that requires action. We know from history that there have been many struggles, many, many difficult times. We sometimes tend to think that we live at the worst of times. But we know that's not true. Humanity, humans, have always faced many, many difficulties. But we know the only thing that's really overcome these difficulties is young people, is people getting together, mobilizing, and working for change. We have some examples here. We know, for example, about the slave trade, and the abolition movement. We know, for example, that it was women getting together, mobilizing, that got women the vote in this country and elsewhere. We know, for example, from more recent history, that it was mass mobilization. It was people taking an interest, people getting up and being counted and speaking out that saw the end of the racist apartheid regime in South Africa. All of this requires action and not just knowledge. What we need to do as NGOs, as, organization, is, as organizations, is understand what motivates people and get them involved, get them engaged. Because that's where many of us are failing. We're failing to inspire young people. We're failing to make it relevant to them. Why should they get up off the sofa? Why should they become engaged? Why should they get involved? Too long, we have really done an injustice to charity. Big celebrities, musicians, Live Aid and others, they've done fantastic work. But that shouldn't define what charity is. And we need to start redefining it and letting young people understand and see that they have a role to play. If we go back, for example, to the slide about slavery, by the end of the 19th century, three quarters of the world's population were under some form of slavery, bondage, servitude. By the end of the 19th century, slavery was outlawed almost everywhere. That was because people in the UK took action. In Manchester, there was a petition 
over a third of the population signed it. At a time when there was no globalization, most Mancunians had never seen an African. They'd never seen a slave. But yet, over three, uh, over a quarter, uh, over a third, sorry, of the population signed it. We know that over 300,000 people in the UK refused to consume people uh, <coughs> that came from fields where uh, slaves were used. That shows us that actually mass, uh, mass action mobilization works. And that's something we're trying to do. We're trying to instigate, ignite young Muslims all over Europe to understand their role and to understand charity's action and to start making the impact. Really, my message today is this, is we have the knowledge, but what we need to do really is know how to motivate our target audience. We all have target audiences. We need to connect with young people. We need them to understand that solutions will come from them really getting involved and being involved. There was a final quote, a quote I always end with when I do campaign training with the young Muslims up and down the country. Never doubt from Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. We need young people to understand this, and we need 